Welcome to the IMSA Grid Finder Time Attack Challenge. My name is Suelio Almeida, racing driver and coach, and here's a quick tutorial for the challenge number three at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park with the GT3. Let's watch the lap first, and then I will explain the thought process in each corner. The very first thing we want to determine how much track we are actually using. So a good tip on this car, it depends a lot on the FOV, but most likely you will see the white line aligning with this part of your inside cockpit. So you can see here, it even looks like we're using the grass, but we're not. The tire is right here and that means you can align this with something inside. It could be these lights. It could be this little edge or just the left side here. It could be maybe this side of the wheel. But what I wanted to notice is that it looks like you're using a lot more than you are. And then if you're too cautious with that, you end up losing a lot of track usage and losing a lot of lap times because of that. I'm gonna turn in kind of cautious. There is not a lot of grip on turn in because as you can see from here, we cannot see anything on the corner because the track is falling. But as soon as we turn in, we now can see a lot more on this area because now we get a lot of grip. So when you turn in, you don't have a lot of response, but then the car is starting to grip more and more and more here until you reach this peak grip. And then the car starts going a little bit off. Be careful with understeer on the exit, on the compression, especially in the Ferrari GT3. I know that we can have many cars in this challenge. So each car will behave a little bit differently but mostly you will reach peak grip more or less around here. In terms of braking, pretty much 1% braking. As you can see, it's almost nothing, but I'm not coasting. This is not zero. This is actually one or two or 3% brakes because I am just adding that tiny extra grip on the front tires to keep the car rotating and preventing it from understeering. Then back on power, as soon as I realize that I can carry all that extra speed and use all the track on the outside, just be careful here because if you do touch the grass, the car can snap pretty quickly and you will spin and go all the way to this wall here. Then after that, same thing about track usage and same thing about you not being able to see anything after the corner entry. So as you can see, similar, a little bit, a little bit less aggressive since we are on the left side of the car. But as you can see, I am aligning pretty aggressively the white line with something inside of the cockpit. Then I start turning in, that very tiny brakes, same thing. Here it was a little bit like 5% brakes, then one, two, around, around that area, trying my best to hit this little clip here, to try to clip this little indentation on the grass. That's my reference. If I hit that, I know that the car will start driving a little bit to the middle, kind of a double apex approach. And then the cool thing about this is that when you turn in here, the car is falling, 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 falling. There is no grip. The car feels very unresponsive and understeer. But you can see how there's not, not a lot of rubber here. And then suddenly the track gets very dark around this area. Why is that? Because now the track is doing this. The, the track is compressing now 
and you have a lot more traction, a lot more mechanical grip, which means the tires lay a lot more rubber on the second apex compared to the first apex. That means we can actually rotate more and extract more from the car as soon as we get here. Now we are on the compression, I'm on power, and the car really grips and you can feel a lot of rotation here. In real life, this is very hard on your neck because of how much grip there is here. Then you try to keep bringing the car as early as you can to the left. As soon as you exit this left-hander, there's right away another right-hander after and you really wanna use that track. So just don't relax, don't go in between on a straight line here. Keep turning left, 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 left. And then same thing, using all the track. Here, we're gonna brake a little bit harder, around 40% and then trail braking very, 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 very progressively. Just make sure you don't force the car because same thing, we are falling here. This is a corner with almost no grip because we are falling, falling, falling on the crest. And that means if you force the car, you start overheating either the front or the rears and then the car feels terrible on the exit. So it's all about patience. This is a patience game. You see on entry, I'm trying to align the car with the inside end of this concrete patch here. Not sure if it's a concrete or just tarmac, but I tried to align the car and have the these tires on the patch and these tires on the inside. And then I just try to follow that and follow and follow and follow because it ends up meeting with the apex. And the apex of this corner is actually the very end of the inside curb. So you see the curb from here and it makes you want to use it, but don't use it yet. Your apex is all the way here only, not before that. So as you can see, I get back on power a little bit before the apex and then the car starts going wide. Little corrections here for the tiny oversteer, not wanting to force the car, not wanting to get too much traction control so I can carry as much speed as possible. And then right here, you don't need to worry too much about this. You just want to not clip this first apex here. You see this inside, it's tempting to use it, but what you really want to use is right here. This inside, as you can see, there are there's two squares here. Those are my references to more or less where I'm going to be hitting the inside. My aim here is to be completely straight around here. So what I want to do is make sure that I can prepare this corner as well as I can to maximize the entry and exit of Moss Corner, which is the most important corner of the whole track. I'll tell you why in a second. We can break pretty hard here because there's a lot of grip, there's a huge compression, and then after you get here, now we can't see anything. So if we can't see anything, that means we are on a crest, and the car is gonna fall, 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 there's no grip. So as you can see, I'm barely trail braking here, almost nothing, maybe one, two, three percent, and then as soon as I get here, I actually reapply my brakes a tiny bit. Why is that? Because here there's no grip, and you can't force the car, but as soon as we get on a flatter spot, Right now we have a little bit more grip and I want to reapply the brakes from 1% to like five, six, 7% just so I can get the car to rotate, rotate, rotate as much as possible because I wanna prepare the best exit I can. And as you can see, uh, get back on power slightly before the apex and let the car run all the way to the outside to not activate any traction control and make sure that I get that exit because it's going to be a long straight uphill. So every kilometer, Per hour or mile per hour that you can carry extra here on the exit will give you a huge amount of lap time. Then we get into turn eight, turn in, still flat, and then you start trail braking very lightly, trying to double apex here. So first apex is this curb, car goes wide, and then back to the second apex, and then back on power for a while, but not for too long, because now we are downshifting to third, and very carefully turning in and increasing the steering very slowly as the car gains and gains rotation and loses speed. And then I'm going to try to go all the way to the left here, go that just second to get the engine brake into turn and just make sure you don't turn in too early for the last corner. It's very important to make sure you get the best exit because it's very tempting to turn too early, hit this curb and end up having a very bad understeery exit. So turn in late prepare the best exit, get the car very rotated before you get back on power so that when you get back on power, you commit to carrying that extra speed. It's gonna be very important because it's gonna determine the end of your lap and also the beginning 
of the next lap. So if you lose time here, you end up losing a lot more than you expect. I hope you have a great week and have fun practicing.